This is a quick blog on putting together a commercial cleaning sales strategy using a financial perspective. Now this can apply to commercial cleaning, janitorial, commercial carpet cleaning. From a sales and marketing standpoint, it, it's really all the same thing. It, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't change if you're a contract cleaner or focused on uh, specialty work like carpet or tile. And what we're going to talk about in this blog is using your financial information to make sales and marketing decisions. Now there's all kinds of different perspectives and angles, layers if you will, to, to, to think about your sales and marketing strategy. And one of them is going to be our financial information, you know, our financial data, because that's something that we have. We, we have history of, we know what we're charging people, we know how much profit we're making, and once we know that information, then we can start to think forward and, and jump ahead of that information. So the first thing I want to point out is there is two ways to think about this. One is the analytical part. This is the data. And then the other angle to think about this is the strategy. You know, it, it's great to have uh, data and financial information, but even once we have that information, then we, we want to get a piece of paper, uh, put together a, uh, a spreadsheet, whatever tool you use, and start to write down what you're going to do about it. Just having the data in it of itself doesn't mean anything. We then want to take that information and actually solve the problem. So how, how I'm going to start is I'm just going to choose a topic. And let's say for argument's sake, you're going through your company profitability, and you're looking at the net profit margin. You're currently at 18%. It was 15 And you're looking at this information, and you're thinking, I really want to get that. It's 18 is okay, but I really want to get that to 28 I want to get that to 30 That's my goal. So that's... The financial, uh, this is the analytical part. Now we have information. We know physically what's happening. So then what we would do is we want to switch to strategy. Okay, I know I want to increase my gross profit. And then how am I going to measure it? Well, I'm going to look at percentage of gross sales. Create a goal for ourselves. <clears throat> And, you know, this is up to you. Some people like to uh, set incremental goals. Like if your goal was 60%, maybe you would start at 58 and then another quarter or another year, uh, 59 and then 60. And some people, they just want to set the big goal and, and get there piece by piece. So this is the goal. And then the most important part is right here, how to. How am I going to do it? And these are just questions to be asking yourself. So let's say we found in the data uh, that we want to increase our gross profit. We know how we're going to measure it. We're going to set a goal. Now we're going to set out how am I going to do that? And how does this apply to sales and marketing? One would be monitoring your labor costs. For sales and marketing, what we would want to look at is our current current pricing structure. And generally speaking, it's always a bad idea to raise prices excessively. So maybe if we raise prices by 1%, a half of a percent, 2%, uh, depending on your current situation, that could definitely increase your gross profit. Um, another how-to would be well, I want to upsell one high margin service per year. So let's say you're a janitorial company, you're cleaning restaurants, and you're going to sell them one high margin tile and grout cleaning service per year in order to boost your overall contract margins. And then, uh, this wouldn't be sales and marketing related, but you would uh, 
maybe this is related to mon monitoring your labor costs that maybe you would want to go and audit 10 random jobs and, and, and see why your costs are and if they're accurate so that's how that that's uh, the first example of uh, I, I came up with a, a, a finite financial problem that I found in the data and now I'm going to turn this into a sales and marketing strategy by looking to raise our prices and that doesn't necessarily mean to your current customers but maybe to future customers if you're currently pricing uh, contract services at a dollar fifty square foot per year maybe if you raise it two percent going forward and then obviously the uh, high margin service so then uh, that's one scenario. Let's take a look at another scenario and this is equally important if not more important is cash flow. Cash flow to a uh, business to business uh, commercial sales is extremely important because what happens is we have to make payments today now to labor, chemicals, gas, etc. but we might not be getting that money back for 15, 30, 60, maybe even 90 days in worst case scenario. So following our cash flow is extremely important and it's extremely important also to our sales and marketing strategy because at some point uh, we can fall so far behind that we it, it's time for us to start changing the mix of clients up if we see a pattern. So this is the data part of it. This is the analytical part of it that we're going to look and say, you know, here is where we are currently. This is where we were in the past, and we want to improve on it. So then you would switch to the strategy part and say, okay, I want to increase cash flow. This is how I'm going to measure it. Here is my goal and the how to, the sales strategy part. Let's look at the data and what we'll want to do is look at our current prospect list and our current client list and see if a pattern emerges. Uh, let's say you're you're cleaning a lot of pro uh, property managers and they're all paying you 60 days and you see that over and over and over again. Well, then that would be time that maybe we'll quit selling property managers for a uh, uh, six months or a year we're going to switch and we're going to do smaller accounts where we can get quicker turnaround on our cash uh, another example would be to reduce our invoice terms uh, but and this is directly a part of sales and marketing because some people will not do it they they're going to pay 60 days and that's it or they're going to pay 30 days and they're never going to pay quicker than that so you would have to change your client list you'd have to change your prospect list then if you're everybody right now is paying 60 and you need to get it down uh, and then another example would be if you do a lot of one-time jobs for construction cleaning uh, carpet cleaning windows that kind of stuff uh, th these are what I would call project jobs or one-time jobs. Maybe you could reduce that to 15 days or even seven. Do on receipt for certain ones. Uh, that's how this all relates to sales and marketing. That what we want to do, and this is the final part uh, that we're going to go over, is once we go through our data, and we see what accounts are causing this problem and that's that's when we're going to jump back to strategy is I want to evaluate my client list I want to see does a pattern emerge am I doing let's say you're doing a lot of retail through management companies and they're all paying in 60 and 90 days or well, at some point that that's gonna kill you and it, it not everybody but that can create a real cash flow problem so if you see that pattern then you would want to stop and say hey 
uh, I think I need to change my prospect list. Now sometimes there isn't a pattern, but that's that's the whole point of going through an exercise like this is to go through your past due accounts and, and see is there a specific industry that is sticking out. Go through your low margin accounts and say is there a pattern? Is there a certain industry? Is there a certain size of is it uh, a certain area that you live in that's causing this that that's that's the point of this and that's the point of going through uh, data but once we have that data we we then gotta jump to the strategy and say okay how are we gonna change this up 